guys and gals, me Mudahar and Buckos, Cyberpunk is back on sale after 180 days, at least for the PlayStation Store. I don't think they ever took it off Xbox One, for whatever reason, but you know, PlayStation has brought it back. Now, for all of you who didn't realize, this is pretty big news. PlayStation taking down a pretty flagship game? This is like PlayStation taking down something as large as FIFA or Madden for basically being an incomplete pile of crap, which they probably should because those games are actually worse off than Cyberpunk 2017. But that's a whole different story, okay? Cyberpunk 2077 is back for $49.99, so you can pay $10 less to have a game run at 15 frames per second on your PlayStation 4. Now, I like to talk about this game because, for those of you who don't know, I have a real personal connection. I've been waiting for this game since back when I was going, Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new Haunted Gaming today. We're going to be reading a creepypasta about Sonic.exe. That's how long I've been waiting for this game, okay? i become older, I have become more of a I, I've become more fat I that's that's what it comes down to all right I time has passed all right time memoriam a lot has changed in everyone's life motherfuckers have been waiting for this game since they were in high school are now people with children okay literal jobs kids taxes whatever you want to call it almost middle-aged at this point this game has been with us for a while now it's back on PlayStation Store and they slapped on a big important notice users sorry hold on let me get into the voice here Users continue to experience performance issues with this game. Purchase for use on PS4 systems is not recommended. For the best cyberpunk experience on PlayStation, play on PS4 Pro and PS5 systems. Yeah, basically you can buy a game again based PlayStation users, but um... <laughs> What are you going to play at 15 frames? What's wrong with you? Now, I'm one of those people where I play on the highest subset of systems. For full preface, I'm going to be showing you some gameplay. And this is no flex by any chance, but I'm going to show you what my system is. This is a Intel i9-9900K CPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3090, okay? It is running toasty at 60 degrees, by the way. God, I hate this Canadian heat wave. But that is my system. Now, why am I mentioning this? Not as a flex, but I'm here to show you that I'm going to show you cyberpunk footage running on the PC and it's running on a computer that I honestly believe only like 0.1% of the PC master race technically has so this is not indicative of everyone's cyberpunk experience but the game has run fine for me I'm able to walk around the city get into fights running at completely maxed out graphics okay absolutely maxed out and for what it's worth the game looks great on a PC completely running at ultra there's a lot of NPCs on the screen that'll spawn there's a lot of NPCs that just happen to despawn a feet away from me. Alright, so they finally fixed like where homeless people should be spawning, which is kind of cool, I guess. And everyone seems to have like a walk cycle and everything and every, you know, it's... <laughs> it's just cute. Oh! Oh! Okay. Well, you see it right there, they just despawn, I guess. And driving through the city is okay. There's there's plenty of traffic, right? It's a it's a decent looking game. Now, there's a lot of issues with the game that go deep seated, but we'll get to that in a bit. It looks fine on PC. So I'm gonna read you some of the patch notes that CD Projekt Red has released, uh, just to sort of show you what they've changed. So here's patch 1.23. Fixed an issue where the open the package objective could change location. Solid. Nomad removed unnecessary button prompts. Solid. Uh, going down over here, let's see. Fixed an issue where one of the male stormers were T-posing. Uh, I don't know if you've played the game, see, but the game, the entire city is fucking T-posing at this point, alright? It's a goddamn Teen Titans building at this point, Jesus Christ. Uh, they've got some, uh, PC-specific fixes, like Steam, changing language settings to default, will now set it to the language of the Steam client. You know, like God intended default to be, right? Xbox-specific, fixed an issue where the pause menu would open again on its own if the Xbox guide and the pause menu were closed in quick succession. I think the game is running a bit crappier on the base Xbox One. I think they'd appreciate a lot more memory fixes. But, you know, these are fixes, okay? This is what you expect in fucking patch notes. But what's a real kick in the ass is this one. Numerous crash fixes in animations, UI, scene, physics, and gameplay systems, memory optimizations, and memory management improvement in various systems, reducing the number of crashes. Which is true, I have not crashed once on PlayStation 5, and even on PC anymore. So whatever the patch did, 
actually did fix up whatever memory leaks existed. This is just from me, my anecdotal evidence. Various console CPU optimizations. <laughs> You know what they mean by that? I'm going to show you what they mean by that. Watch this. All right. Basically, the entire logic over there is, yeah, if we render only two cars in the game and no NPCs, yeah, the game's going to run at 30 frames per second, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's the optimizations we're looking at. All right. Instead of rendering 10 NPCs that bring the frame rate down, render one, because at least you're rendering something in the city. Uh, and that's just generally what you're looking at. That's where we've reached to make the game run at least playable on these last generation systems. Now, I just want to preface this whole thing by saying that there's a lot of negativity that floats around. This video is full of it as well, but I just want to reiterate that there is negativity that floats. If you Google Cyberpunk 2077, Cyberpunk just got its first update its month and it is disappointing. 30 gig update. I remember when my game console could store half that as full total storage. Cyberpunk is back and it's with a big surprise. What, are they gonna give me a dicking? Is that what's gonna happen? Cyberpunk is back. What does this mean for the future? Yeah, world peace. World peace is what it means. Fans are not happy, but there's also a new problem. Yeah, game runs at 25 frames pretty consistently. I guess that is a problem. Now, this creator, El Analista de Bits, I know I pronounced that fucking wrong, but everyone pronounces my last name wrong in a very dirty way. So, you know what, at this point, I just don't even care. Has made this video where they've done FPS comparisons. Now, I only have a PS5 and a PS4 Pro packed away. I don't have a base PlayStation 4, at least from what I know in my garage so I can't exactly test this the way that I want now this person has went out to test this patch relatively you know extensively so we're gonna be looking at some footage over here to really figure out how the game is running at 30 frames per second on a base system so let's just back and I'll show you and walk you through it now first thing you do when you leave your apartment and this is all in act one of the game this is the first time you enter night city to explore it and one thing to notice over here is the game is running at like 30 frames 29 there are npcs as soon as you leave but now if you watch the footage one thing to note is while there is pop in on a lot of you know ex a lot of objects around the world and world streaming there's literally no vehicle no npc on the road the reason why this game is running at 30 frames now is this is the reality of the game you know at this point in time i have uploaded footage where the game will literally not render anything while you're driving through the city and that's footage that i've recorded on a playstation 5 now the reason why it's doing that on a ps5 is the way that cyberpunk is approaching these updates is that they've basically been patching each skew each console version in its own way so if you're on an xbox one base the first xbox one that came out you have a different uh game visual setting than say somebody on the xbox one x and then you have a different setting of the xbox series s and then a different setting of the xbox series x so with xbox from what i understand there's four different versions of the game with different npc placements uh different visual rendering techniques all of that stuff with PlayStation, there are only two versions, which is base at PS4, where they've literally rendered no NPCs, no cars. Then there's PlayStation 4 Pro, which we have the ability to witness as well. This is PS4 Pro footage being rendered. It looks marginally sharper, and there's one more NPC on the street versus zero. So PS4 has a different rendering setup than PS4 base. PS4 Pro is a bit faster. That is to say, PS5 uses effectively what is the exact same rendering setup from what I understand, on the actual PS4 Pro. So this is PS5 footage running at 60 frames per second. Double the frame rate because what they've done is they've uncapped the frame rate requirement. So now the game can use the PlayStation 5's power to render the game in a far better system. I actually like having faster FPS than just graphic settings anyways. But if I can have both, why not? And the PS5 is definitely capable of both. Back to the footage, there's literally just one NPC and a car driving in the distance. Uh, maybe one more NPC if I look close enough. Point is, PS5, while it's double the frame rate, is using the same makeup of the PlayStation 4 Pro. So the same resolution setup, the same NPC spawning system, the same vehicle spawning system. These games are not properly optimized for the next generation anyway. So if you're playing on a PS5, you're basically playing the PS4 Pro version with double the frame rate. And if you're playing on a Series X, I believe you're playing the sort of gimped Series or sorry, this slightly better Xbox One X version with double the frame rate, you know, from what I understand. Now, this is probably the 
best that CD Projekt Red is ever going to be able to do on these last generation systems. And where I have to invoke a breath of positivity is this is the best the development team can honestly achieve with the system that they have. There are plenty of open world games on the PlayStation 4 base, PS4 Pro, Xbox One to X, that uh, run at 30 frames per second. And the reason for that is open world games are typically very CPU dependent. This Cyberpunk game doesn't really have that big of an issue as far as the GPU is considered from what I understand. It can run relatively fine across the consoles. From what I honestly see and understand, this has an issue with memory bandwidth and with CPU requirements. There's just A, not enough memory on those base systems, 8 gigs is not enough for a game like Cyberpunk, and the CPU requirements are so minimal. You have to understand, these base consoles that people like to bring up every time an update comes on have CPUs that were already way outdated when those systems released in 2013. That is why open world games like GTA 5, which came from the PS3 generation, still run at 30 frames per second because they cannot calculate 60 ticks of game logic per second, okay? That's what is the basic requirement to get those games running up to 60 frames per second on those systems. The only reason they're able to do that on PS5 and Xbox Series X is because they've given you way faster AMD Ryzen-based CPUs. And I don't mean this as a defense to CD Projekt Red. They themselves and the entire company advertise this exact same game for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One users, literally at one point saying that they were surprised how well it fucking ran. So at the end of the day, I have to just say, for the record, this game should have run impeccably if you were to advertise it. There's no reason people who are playing on those base systems should be ignored because their systems weren't fast enough. If you knew that ahead of time, if you knew that during development, you should have canceled those versions and not taking the money blatantly from those players as well. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. I am no way defending CD Projekt Red. They completely, in my opinion, scammed those base console users. In fact, it was so impressive that even during their gameplay reveals on their YouTube channel, they deliberately didn't even show the base versions of either console because they knew that they couldn't. They knew they just couldn't get away with that. Now, beyond all of that with this rendering setup that's going on on the system, this alone is not allowing these systems to consistently hit 30 frames per second. There's a lot of footage you can find of people that are running the game at like 15 frames, 20 frame averages, dipping even below that when you get into actual combat. This is just world exploration. Now, when you go on to Nexus mods and you're looking at mods where they have enhanced police, where they literally said this mod enables police car spawns. This effect will take automatically when you commit crimes and gain heat. The community at this point is coding entire game systems into itself point is, the last generation barely has the world up and running. That is, when there's no NPCs and there's no vehicles that are spawned into the entire mix. There is no headroom left to add police systems, to add all these other systems that make an open world crime-based game an open world crime-based game. The point is, and this is the pill you have to fucking swallow, the last generation systems have been tapped the fuck out, okay? Now, when Cyberpunk releases expansions, I'm gonna wager that they will not release on base PS4 and base Xbox One. They are literally going to be exclusive to either the next generation, and if anything, the base PS4 Pro and the base Xbox One X. That's as far as you'll ever get. And they better be free fucking expansions, by the way, given the launch of this game, just to gain goodwill back. That's all I'm gonna have to add. And these expansions are probably probably the only way things like police systems are ever going to get added and all of the basic requirements that you need to have an open world crime game. Now, I'm not even talking about fixing up the 98% linear story that already exists. That's unfucking fixable. That's like such a deep-seated issue. You'd need to make a brand new fucking game if you were to achieve that entire mess in, in a way that's even somewhat acceptable. You are never going to deus ex this game the way that it should have been. At this point, Cyberpunk 2077 is an amazing Far Cry game, all right? I've literally changed the, the, the actual name for this in my head to Far Cry Blood Dragon 2, just to make myself more at ease with the situation involved. Now, I don't want to be overly negative in this situation, and I hope that I'm not. I really wanted to make this video because I wanted to look at where CD Projekt Red was headed, and I wanted to give sort of a technical breakdown of why this patch makes sense. Why is this game running better? Because A, very simply, they're just rendering a lot less of what's in the game. Basically, what made Night City, this live bustling city, has been reduced to almost nothing on these base systems. And even then, you're just reaching a barely playable system at the moment in time. 
So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that leads us to the end of Cyberpunk 2077, a game that is a true, honest, good case study at false advertising. I think the next time I'm going to be looking at Cyberpunk 2077 is when they give you next-gen upgrades and when they actually give you expansion packs. Till then, I'm going to leave it where it's at. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.